way of doing the classic way of doing an onion is you leave the root. Mm -hmm. The root keeps the onion intact when you're doing your dice. Mm -hmm. You just stand back, baby. I got a knife in my hand. And then the onion will tell you where you're going to cut. You can see all the different. Yeah, markers. I always use that as like my line for exactly. where I'm going to cut it. That's your guide. So yeah. if you do, if you have like. If you want to do a fine dice or brune wall, you would do like in between every line mm -hmm. and then you could use each line as a guide to do a larger dice or a large chop. I always do the larger dice because it's just so so much simpler and faster to, to chop it up. Look, your dog listened to me instead. He did. What a good boy. You know how to tell him. You're so good, Posey. So you do your long cut. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. You do a cross cut. Lay down. Almost all the way through. Lay down. How many cross cuts did you do? Just the one, right in the middle. Oh wow, I always do like two or three cross cuts. Just do the one. And then you have your diced onion. That goes into your stock pot. And it doesn't break apart at the end. You don't have a... Yeah, I always leave that little piece on, too. And then if you have anything like that, you just chop it up, mash it, and voila. Voila! That is... I got a new bottle of coconut oil today. Right there. Right. It's so economical to cook with that. If you cook a lot... Totally. With the olive oil, and it doesn't burn. I, God, I just love it. It makes everything taste like coconut. Um, actually, it does... Well... This one maybe kind of does a little bit, but it's, I like this brand, it's not really strong. Right. It's not extra virgin, see it's organic virgin coconut oil, but it's not the extra virgin, so it's gotcha. more likely like the second press. And I think that one's expeller pressed, which it gets more oil out. And I also like to buy the big old tubs that are twice that size for, um, that are just expeller pressed, and it's almost flavorless. Oh, and good. it's kind of a lot to buy both at the same time. Then sure. I, it's like I have two years worth of oil, right? Or <laughs> years worth of oil. But I wanted to get that one this time because I've been wanting to make muffins and stuff for Marsden. And, right. you know, put the the virgin, it has more um, nutrients in it right. and essential fats than the other one does. So I wanted to get that because I've been cooking stuff for him. And So when you're doing your garlic, so if you don't have a garlic press, you can just do this. Yeah. That just pulls all of those nice yummy oils out of the garlic where it's a wrap in. And then you get that nice sheen and you get all mm -hmm. that garlic opens up. Nice. You're doing... Broccoli, you gonna put the oil on to get it started, to get the onion started? Put the um, oil in the pan? I'm gonna sweat the onions and the carrot and onion together. Oh, together? You wanna do yeah. it together? Okay, you're the boss. I'm the sous chef. I just am so, here to help. I don't, ever, I don't ever peel my carrots. I mm -hmm. wash them, I don't ever peel them. All. I don't peel mine. All the nutrients, all the good stuff is in the skin and the tip. Unless the tip is really ugly, like it's beat up and all black yeah. and gross. Yeah. That's all new growth. So all like that awesome vital energy is right in there. Mm. It's like the little root at the end of the beat. Yeah. Have you ever noticed how it looks like the end of a spinal cord? No, but I feel that way about uh, like cabbages mm -hmm. and like uh, iceberg lettuce. Like, really? Yeah, like if you take a head of iceberg, you just smash it and you pop that thing out and it's like pulling the, the brain stem out of somebody's body. Wow. <laughs> I never noticed I never use iceberg. I always like green leaf or red leaf lettuce. Iceberg has its... I never noticed, but I do feel that way sometimes about vegetables, how similar they are to the human body or the animal body. You know, the, the end of the spinal cord is called cana equida, and they call it that because it means horse's tail. It looks like end of the horse's tail. But if you, if you, if you see that like in gross, in a gross lab, you actually see the dissection and it looks crazy. It looks just like the end of a beat. Really? Like, except for lot, there's lots of them. But like really? that tail of the beat, yeah. It can, one time I got really creeped out about it and I had to text my brother and tell him all about it, which I thought he would think it was remarkable. <laughs>
But he did not. I don't know. He didn't say anything in response. He was like, hmm. I'm like, aren't you supposed to be the botanist, not me? Yeah. That's funny. So, like traditional French cooking or. Oh, wow, such beautiful little carrot pieces. It's European cooking. Um, if you don't do this properly, the chef throws a plate at you and calls you a name. Oh my god. <laughs> That's harsh. Well. You know, that was like our old chef, right? Yeah. Nobody, nobody uh, <laughs> not everybody speaks the language of nonviolent communication. <laughs> I know, I've spent years studying it. I'm still learning. I've seen some, I've seen some shit. <laughs> so, that's a nice, if I was doing a, a traditional mirepoix, like in French cooking, mm -hmm. which is your onions, your carrots, and your celery base, for mm -hmm. all your stocks and your sauces and your flavor profiles it's a it's a ratio and it would be this pile of celery and this pile of carrots equals this pile of onions huh so, oh i have some celery do you want some celery sure yeah we got celery so there's our basic mirepoix and as you see roughly this amount to this amount is the same as this amount to that amount Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a nice little ratio. Right? Mm, this is just is. a little bit of garlic on top yeah. of the sweat with all of this. And then, of course, you have your florets, which you can chop down into little bite-sized pieces. I like mine, depending on what you're doing with it, steaming it or roasting it or whatever, you want to steam it a very short amount of time so you still have some crunch on the stem. This is, these are florets. They're all flowers that are pre-bloom. They're great. They're delicious, and everybody eats these. All the good stuff's in there. That's, All the nutrients? That's your, that's your, that's your money. Really? Yeah. I always just use that for stock. The, um, take off the ugly piece. This ugly piece is off because it's been cut, it's been cut clean mm -hmm. there. You can look at your, you can look at your broccoli. You can gauge how old and how vital it is by whether or not this is really woody. If this is really, really woody, we would go ahead and we would just. Yeah, that one's kind of woody. It's kind of your typical grocery store broccoli we would uh we'll do this we would just trim it off you can use a potato peeler yeah babes what do you want to do on my computer i don't have anything you don't like you don't like the jungle book i do but it's getting gonna be over it's like two hours long <laughs> is it too long for you why don't you just put on one of your videos? Why don't you watch Peppa Pig? Okay. <laughs> That's why we brought it. So we, you could use a potato peeler if you want, or you can keep your knife sharp by not keeping it in a drawer. Yes, sweet pea. Yeah, soft my hair is. I will. Come here. Is all that coconut oil in it? Let me yeah. see. Ooh la la. Like, wow, this this, like, ooh, that's so nice. Most real vlog ever. There's like this random child who keeps coming in. Oh, my, oh. When I wet my hair, it's so long. It is long. It's very long. It's like three times as long as it was before. Yeah. You need it with a nice clean, a nice clean piece. Um, what if I provide your dog? I don't think that's a good idea. No, I think what like. if I Are we going to cook that? The yeah, we're going to cook that. Pieces? Yeah, totally. More nutrients in that there's, than the flower. There's more nutrients here than the flower. Wow, I had the no energy idea. of the plant goes into making the flower, yeah. but the flower itself does not necessarily have any nutritional nutrition as much nutritional value. Yeah. Because it's just a flower. Mm -hmm. At an angle, mm -hmm. you want to see your oil start to like shimmer. <laughs> it's a little damp. So it should be, it should, depending on what the application is, if you're doing a, a hard sear, you don't really want to use olive oil for a hard sear because olive oil has a lower, a lower smoking point yeah, than something like. That's why I like to use coconut oil because I can turn it up real high oil, and I can. Grapeseed oil. Yeah, and I can just be like. Uh, sunflower oil, yeah. peanut oils, so they'll have really high smoking points. Yeah. The idea behind olive oil is to heat it up slowly. It should get fragrant. Mm -hmm. I can and, smell it right now. It smells fragrant now. And then you should start to see a little bit of a wobble 
you'll start start you'll start seeing a little a little bit of a wobble in the pan. Turn my fire down. Um, it'll start to it'll start to I'm smell it really well yeah, right now. It'll start to wobble, and then when it starts to wobble and move around a little bit. Um, and dance, you know, it's ready to go. Like where it's glistening. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of like yeah, a. It has a little glisten. Yeah, you can kind of you can see the, you can see the oil. Why can't you just put the the vegetables on and before it starts wobbling? Well, before it does the wobble wobble. Before it does the wobble wobble. I mean, you can. <laughs> but the question is, if we're trying to, if we're trying to sweat this mm -hmm. and the pan is too cold you end up steaming the vegetables and not sweating the vegetables oh okay and steam gets you nowhere because as soon as you put this into the pan mm -hmm. it's going to start taking all the heat out of the pan and yeah, pull it up into the vegetables. vegetables and the pan is going to drop in temperature immediately By going through my brochure, so I threw in some kale. And what else you have over here? What is this? Uh, broccoli. Oh, uh, dandelion. Dandelion. So I threw some uh, kale, broccoli, and dandelion in there. Along with the beans, I did glaze it with some red wine. We're gonna stir it all up, and we're gonna stick it inside.